Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android Guy. Today I'm going to be going over the benchmark test for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 10.1. And we're going to be going over the basics, which is a Quadrant and Intuitu. So first let's go with Quadrant, see how it runs. And of course, it always has to change, so let's just let it go through. Now remember, this is a uh, dual-core um, processor, not a quad-core. So something very important to note, uh, it should not be anywhere near like the um, Asus Prime. And which is kind of disappointing, uh, just because we were expecting a quad-core. But it didn't happen. Uh, this is a dual core. Unfortunately, it's not even an Exynos dual core, which would have been nice. It's a TI OpMap uh, dual core, which, um, if just to explain what that means, Exynos is Samsung's own personal processor, and it beats everything. Um, it's dual core is faster than every other dual core uh, from last year, and its uh, new quad core beats every processor on the market right now. It's what's going to be in the international version of the Galaxy S3. So it's it's just really something to see in person just because it's it's just that good. Um, now, in terms of this one though, it's a TI OutMap, which is what Samsung used for a couple of their um, other devices like the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, although that one was a little bit faster in comparison. Uh, but one important thing to note, uh, Samsung is no longer using NVIDIA. I'm wondering if it was something that was uh, troubling with them, but I'm not sure. So, uh, anyway, in the meantime, our quadrant has finished, and it looks like it is definitely ahead of the original uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab uh, and the Galaxy Nexus in comparison. Uh, again, the processor you can see, which it should be, the CPU is n is not as good as the Galaxy Nexus. The memory uh, does do a little bit better than it, uh, but definitely the I/O is what's uh, keeping it ahead of anything else. So, uh, going to be a good score overall, and the score is 25.99. All right, guys. So let's look at the other one. Let's see how this one uh, stacks up, uh, which should be interesting because this one we do have, uh, this one does store the Asus uh, Prime in comparison to it, so we'll be able to see how it stacks up against it. Now, um, so as I was saying, the Exynos Quad Core is a miss on here, um, which would be nice, but that is what's going to be on the Galaxy uh, Note 10.1. So, um, this one is definitely going to be more of, you know, if you just want to upgrade from your old tablet and great tablet for the price of $399, the Galaxy Note 10.1 will have the Exynos Quad Core, most likely have a better resolution as well, um, and of course the pen. So, uh, definitely something to keep out for. Will it be uh, worth the price difference of probably $100? Well, we'll wait and see that. I would love it just for the quad-core processor, something I'm definitely looking forward to. But in terms of uh, Samsung no longer being with NVIDIA on any device this year, I'm wondering if Samsung just wanted to kind of go with their own chip instead of using uh, NVIDIA's anymore. But definitely something interesting to note. And then we have the flying Android guys. They're just flying around, of course. And if you guys have any questions about the processors or anything like that, feel free to ask any questions um, in terms of how they work and all that fun stuff, or um, just how do they compare to other processors. Samsung does make uh, most of the processors out, even though we hear about companies like Snapdragon, which is uh, Qualcomm, and um, you hear about companies like uh, NVIDIA, um, Samsung makes the majority of the dual core processors out in the market, and we expect them to make the majority of the quad core processors out in the market. So, um, I remember reading an article that I think out of uh, in Q1, Samsung produced about, I think it was 60 to 80 percent of the dual core processors out in the market, which was really impressive. But you have to remember they make uh, the processor for not only all of their own devices. 
but they also make the processor for um, the iPads, the iPhones, the iPods. So in terms of processors, they really are the top seller. No one really can touch them on uh, product production, which is one reason actually why the iPhone will not come out till October is because Samsung isn't making Apple's processing chip till July. So um, kind of uh, interesting their relationship always how it is, but yeah. And we're almost done right now at 92%. And there we go. All right, guys. So this one got a much higher uh, score. And I'm um, not sure if just Quadrant's falling behind in comparison to it, but um, just definitely a much higher score in comparison. Now, again, this is a dual-core uh, 1 uh, gigahertz processor. Um, in terms of everything else, uh, we see kind of uh, average CPU scores. Graphics is not too impressive, but let's see how they stack up against everything else. And it's taking a while to load that. Um, Alright, and we'll see how it compares. So, this is a uh, 4753. Uh, so in terms of benchmarks, it's actually really not that impressive. Um, it actually had it's actually less than the Galaxy S2 um, in comparison to it, which of course that one did have an Exynos dual core, which just goes to show you an Exynos dual core versus a TI Oatmap dual core. Exynos is still faster. Um, even the Galaxy Nexus, the Note, all um, are a bit faster. So in terms of benchmarks, uh, this does not bode well for the um, Galaxy um, Tab 2 10.1 uh, in comparison to other tablets right now, or well, even in comparison to other phones right now. However, um, definitely using it, it hasn't had too much of any kind of lag um, in comparison to it. But so far from what I've seen, it looks like it moves fast once you're kind of using it. So for day-to-day -day usage, um, it looks pretty solid. But in terms of benchmarks, it's not that impressive. Which is not meant to be a benchmark holder. I just like to reiterate, obviously, it's not supposed to be the top of the line. It's supposed to be good for the money. So uh, those were the benchmark results. If you have any questions, again, that you want to see in the review, definitely feel free to ask and um, I will answer them for you. All right, this has been RCKY, the Android guy.